when you talk about the, the civilian population trying to overcome uh, a lot of these barriers to exercise and, and physical activity, and then you multiply that by infinity for our wounded warrior population, um, then I think you can start to understand a little bit about some of the things that these guys and girls are trying to overcome. We've started to adjust our programs and alter our programs for that approach. And that helps the veteran because a lot of times now they're not paying attention to maybe some of the symptoms that they had from post-traumatic stress or, or some, some combat stress because they're paying attention to the discipline and to the sport. And it, it takes their mind away from that. What's up, guys? Hey. Right in here. What's up, girlfriend? Not much. How you doing? I haven't seen you in a long time. How's married life? Different. <laughs> <laughs> you guys all army? Yeah. yeah. Navy. Former 10th Mountain, and I never got trained to ski when I was in. <laughs> yeah, see, I gotta have the, the toe clips and all. Because I don't have control. My, yeah, I don't have control of my left foot. When I, you lose control, have you ever, like, hit oh. and you fly? Oh, yeah. For real? Oh, wow. yeah, you're Every time we went no down the hill last there, huh? year. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I learned being in service was get your ass back up if you want to survive and keep going. Keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. I tried talking myself out of actually coming up here. I was so pumped up to get with Wounded Warriors and to do my first event. But I think you hit it on the nail with fear. I'm thinking, man, it's not possible that I'm going to go out there, I'm going to be tired, I can't make it back home. So it's the fear like you're talking about. At least you didn't give in. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. came out. It's like everything. When I was in the Air Force, I didn't even think about walking through minefields. You know, it was just my job. The hardest thing for me with everything that I've gone through, getting hurt, is now I get scared. If I hit my head, it can do more damage. I could have more strokes or whatever. Fear is a natural emotion that everybody has. The ability to push past it helps move you on. So, are you ready to go skiing on Wednesday? Yeah. Yeah? How's yours coming along? Good. Yeah? So what color am I going to do for the snip snippers? What's your plan? I have lots of plans. You have lots of plans? I'm afraid I'm going to drop this thing. And shaking. I'm going to have to take my shot. I forgot again. You're supposed to do that. Yeah. So I gotta get it done. For me trying to recall things, my memory is like a slideshow. And uh, it's not quite in order and it moves at, I don't know, different speeds, I guess. Where I'll just get a glimpse of something that I don't remember or recognize. I forget 70, maybe 80% of my day. And uh, I don't remember a lot of the family stuff. Like, I know I got married in Hawaii. Do I remember a lot of it? No. And I think that's one of the, my biggest frustrations is when I try to remember something. And I know it's in there. I just can't get to it. What's your favorite thing about painting? Painting, it helps keep me calm. It relaxes me. What's your favorite thing about skiing? That I get to do it with you and mommy. Because it scares me. The slideshow in my brain, along with what my friends have told me or what I've read in my medical file, kind of puts it together. Went in the Army, did that for 10 years and was a police officer in Fayetteville, North Carolina, and then was a deputy for the King County Sheriff's Office. After 9-11 happened, I went in the Air Force Reserves. I deployed August 2010 to Afghanistan. The mission was a buyback. A lot of times we would buy stuff from Taliban fighters. 
get the explosives off the playing field for a little bit. I remember carrying back a uh, Soviet explosive, and uh, as I was lifting, it just felt like somebody hit me in the back with a baseball bat. I don't know what it was, but one of the guys there came over and checked me out. The only thing I remember him saying to me was, uh, no blood, no foul. Went back to working, and then my, I remember my hand was numb, and I remember touching my face and not being able to feel it. They say that I had four big strokes and then 18 or so little mini strokes. They showed me a picture of my brain, a bunch of little dead spots. <laughs> But it is what it is. Hey, Andy, can you come give me a hand a minute? Yep. Keith is a very type A personality, uh, fiercely independent. There's been a lot of times where he says, I'm fine. I've got it. I'll take care of it. And I know that it's very hard for him at times. It takes a lot for me to just do normal stuff during the day. Cause mentally I have to concentrate so hard. I have no feeling on the left side of my body and uh, it's not gonna change. I know he's slipped before and he has problem walking, but I know he got shot in the back and in Afghanistan, it was not good. In the beginning it was just static, couldn't do anything. I put on a lot of weight. You know, I was a burden and I did not like it. I think he struggled with depression a lot. He wondered what value he could bring to someone else's life. He talked about being broken. The pain that you get when you have body function come back goes from being a tiny pinprick feeling to feeling like somebody's stabbing you in the arm constantly. Like body throbbing, going through, and it just gets worse and worse the more feeling you get back. I was 18 when I joined the Air Force. I was on my way to visit my mother in New York City, September 11th. I was supposed to have breakfast with family in the windows of the world at the top of the World Trade Center, and we watched both towers drop from the harbor. My third phone call after calling my father and my mother was to my recruiter. I wanted to prove what red, white, and blue was to the person who did this. There was no question about it. He was going to go into the Air Force. You know, and when he told me that, you know how proud you are. It's a neat thing. It just, wow, you know. You, Something I always wanted to do and I couldn't do because I couldn't read or write. The position I actually wanted to be as an aircraft mechanic. My job provided uh, transportation for ground trips. And I hit 39 countries by the age of 21. October of 2008, I was told to take a mandatory flu shot. Well, I'd work 38 days straight without a day off between 14 to 16 hours. I contracted a virus. I woke up in the morning and when I Put my legs on the floor, I stood up. The moment I tried to stand up, I collapsed. Within 72 hours of being admitted, I was paralyzed from the neck down. Couldn't feel nothing. 33 days went by. Uh, I remember waking up from what felt was a long sleep, and I was told I'd never walk, breathe, eat, or talk ever on my own again. If I had the ability to do it, I probably would have committed suicide. I'm trying to yell at myself to move my arms. Pick your stupid arm up, pick your stupid arm up. That's all I'm telling myself and nothing's happening. I prayed every day. Your son's sitting in a bed and the doctor said to me, he might be alive tomorrow. And that was the hardest, the hardest thing in the world, you know? I go, what's gonna die before me? You know, I don't want that to happen. You never want to happen that. My dad's motivation and drive has always been something that's driven me as a kid. And on February 12th, 2009, I uh, picked my left arm up off the bed a quarter of an inch. 
at that point I knew I wasn't going to be who this doctor said I was going to be. The idea of calling our, our Warriors alumni may seem a little funny at first, but you know, they all graduated from the same school. Having a brother or a sister who's been there, that shared experience, that shared bond, whether they're missing a limb, whether they're blind, whether they have hidden wounds, PTSD, and traumatic brain injury, but it's about allowing them to be there for each other. <laughs> it was a camp, and it was an introduction to adaptive sports. That was the first time I met Chris. There's just that instant bond that is very powerful. You would have thought they had been best friends for life. Being around somebody that just understood what you were trying to do and how hard it was just clicked. Wounded Warrior Project chose Keith and I to receive service dogs from K9 Care of Montana. And I was able to make the phone call to Keith. Yeah, not only am I getting a dog, but you're getting a dog from the same litter. It's awesome because they grew up together. We're family, they're family. You know, it's not a makeshift friend, somebody you're trying to be a friend with. You have a deep connection with that person. Okay. And you can be there for that person when you need them the most or when they need you the most. You find out who your real friends are when you're hurt. And, you know, they, they're there. And no matter what, they're there. I'm right behind you. <laughs> nice one. Catching my six. <laughs> Since my new life has begun after an injury, nice ride. Chris has been there since the beginning. It wasn't until that first adaptive sports camp to learn how to do stuff again. That's when I truly started to accept the new me. We did a Seattle uh, soldier ride here with Window Warrior Project, 50 mile ride. We were able to do a bike ride that I never thought I would ever be able to do. We have to get these warriors to discover that exercise is a resource. And if we can impact the physical side, the mental side will change. But there's a lot of barriers there for these warriors. And a lot of times with their new injuries, there's some ways that they have to adapt those exercises in order to stay active. And they don't know how. So that's where we step in. We're looking for somebody to help us move forward and help us break a barrier. I'd rather have somebody give me crap over something than give us sympathy, because we're not looking for sympathy. Let's go, Smalls. <laughs> I don't need somebody to feel sorry for me. I'm not sorry. Now, I play two, two and a half hours of seated volleyball a week. I do archery. I started losing the weight. What are you competing in? Like, what fields? It's just the compound open. Compound open. The Warrior Games is the Olympics for the military. It allows us to compete on the level of other warriors. We can go out and hang out with other vets that are going through some of the same challenges that we are, and everybody's in a different stage of their recovery, and it helps. I don't think I'd be as good as I am if I didn't have Chris pushing me a little bit, and it works both ways. My son won't stop. It's a long road, but nothing's gonna stop him. That's kind of his attitude. I remember doctors saying, you're not gonna be able to do anything, and there's nothing you can do to change it. I had a follow-up appointment with this doctor. I actually walked into his office, flipped him off, and walked out. Like, I proved you wrong. I bet you could go up that, no problem. Oh, I think I got it. Oh, yeah. I think I got it. You had a problem at all. My son's past what I would ever dream. To me, my life has been different because I, I'm unchallenged, and the, the challenge I have didn't fall on the, my kids. I struggle all my life, but you, you go on and do what you, you have to do, and you try harder. And I, I've seen all my kids trying harder. A father's proud when your kids out there. You. Was it fun to work on those? Yeah. Awesome times.
daunting at other times, but I can't look back at anything and go, I wish I did something different. Ride and I know that I'm closer with my father because of everything that I went through. He knows deep down inside that I am where I'm at because of him. Pit switch. Good boy. Good boy. Yeah, good boy. You know, I still have the bad days, but having a family and friends right there to push me helped. I want to do it. It's exotic fruit time. My day is built around helping them. He does things that are special for me and Mom. I really like it when I'm with him. I just want to be there. So if they need me, I want to be there and be able to help. Please be careful. This is dull. Something that's simple for an average person it can be very, very challenging for him. <laughs> but I have to let him work through it on his own. That's how he's progressing. Oh, I heard a crap. I heard a crap. Giddy up. Coconut meat for everyone. I know for a fact Andy was probably going insane when I was trying to crack that coconut but she let me. <laughs> oh, they're coming. Olivia, watch. Ready? Daddy! I know that Keith loves me and Olivia with all his heart. What's up? You ready? Let's go, let's go, let's go. Hang on, you gotta wait. Hurry yep. up, Chris. Yeah, Chris, you're slowing us up. Keith wouldn't be skiing if it wasn't for us. He chooses to push himself because he knows that we enjoy it. You know, alone, it's more scary, it's more hard, but being with your friends, it's not that scary, and you can do it. You got this, bro? That's it. Full speed ahead. You ready, bro? Let's go. Stay out of my way. Shh, I'll meet you to the bottom. Whatever. Yeah. Blend on your ass. <laughs> God. <laughs> I'm catching you. Uh oh, I'm gonna get you. I like that run. This way, this way. Hello, Christopher. Definitely, I've learned to like to go skiing. It's a feeling of overcoming. I'm out there doing it. I know I'm getting better. I'm getting better daily with everything that I do rehab-wise, strength-wise, distance-wise. Through adaptation, I can do anything that anybody else can do. <laughs> to heal and to be able to move beyond the state of being broken. He's not broken. He never was and he never will be. You're still part of a family. You have not lost that family that you truly thought you did when you got released from the military. Looking back at where we were and being able to see where we are now, and the only way we got there was with each other's strength. We got there together.